Hey guys, it's Hack Tutorials, and today I'm going to show you how to downgrade your PS3 using E3 nor Flasher. This has been a very highly requested video by you guys, and finally I'm here to make it. Uh, before I start, I'd like to let you know there's actually a lot of great tutorials out there, and by no means am I the only one that's, that's making it, so you guys should check out the other ones as well. So this is not original by any means, but since you guys have been asking me to make it so much, why not? Alright, so let's get right in. What are the things you need in order to downgrade your PS3? Well, to start off, you need a PS3 that can be downgraded, because not all PS3s can be downgraded. Um, all fats can be downgraded, all, some slims can be downgraded, and absolutely no super slims can be downgraded. Um, uh, in terms of fat PS3s, if your PS3 starts with CECHH01 and above, meaning that second H, or maybe it says I or J, K, L, M, N, O, P, whatever, um, then you can. But if it's anyway from anywhere from A to G, then you can't use an E3 flasher. You have to use something else because that's a NAND PS3. So there are NAND PS3s and NOR PS3s. So you have to make sure your fat PS3 is a NOR PS3. Um, and if you're a, on a slim, uh, slims with the model number CCH25 uh, and below can be downgraded most likely. Um, 2.5 is kind of the barrier, so your PS3 may or may not be able to be downgraded. And we're actually going to check that pretty soon. Um, if you're a size 3001A or something, it cannot be, and obviously no super slims at all. There's absolutely no super slim that exists out there that can be downgraded. Um, if this seems confusing, this will all be found in the description of the video, so you could review and uh, figure out if your PS3 can be downgraded. Or easier, you could just use the minimum version checker, as we will again pretty soon. So what are some of the other things? Obviously you need an E3 NOR flasher, as you see over there. Um, in terms of the tools, I'm going to be using two screwdrivers. I have a big one for some big screws, which there's not a whole lot of big screws. Um, yeah, that's that. I also have this screwdriver, which is kind of universal. I could, uh, I could put different tips into it. Um, I don't know how well this camera can focus, but... Anyway, uh, you need a USB. This USB is... 16 gigabyte USB. You'll need a micro SD card with some sort of adapter. So let me open this up for you. So on the left I have a micro SD and on the right I have an adapter. You're, for some PCs you might not actually be able to use this adapter. You could actually get an adapter that kind of looks like a USB. But on the back, there's a slot where you could put in the SD card, the micro SD card. Those work too, as long as you could actually get the micro SD inside your computer. That's what matters. You also need a clamp, all right? And this is we're gonna actually clamp down the E3 flash ribbon cable, uh, one we're gonna be downgrading. So you need a clamp. Um, you're also gonna need some tape for the clamp because we don't want to have um, this bare metal on our motherboard. That can short things out. That's bad. So, as you can see what I've done with this clamp, I've put some tape on it. This clamp's big, so I'm going to be using the smaller one, and I'm sure going to show you how I put on the tape. It's very simple. Um, uh, and also I have some scissors so I could cut this tape. Alright, pretty basic. So that's that. That's all you need. And I'm going to meet you on my computer. Alright guys, so I'm at my computer, and you're going to need to download a folder from the description. So it's going to look like a RAR file, you're just going to have to right click, um, extract files, click OK. But I've already extracted it, so why isn't this closing? So it's right here, everything at E3. This has everything necessary to downgrade your PS3. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a minimum version checker. This is to assure that your PS3 can be downgraded. So just open this up and you'll find a folder called ps3updat.pup. Right click and copy it and then plug your USB into your computer. Go over to your USB, um, create a folder called ps3. Inside that folder create a folder called update, both in caps. And inside there we're going to actually put this ps3 update. I already had an old one in there. Just click, right click and uh, click paste. And you should have this ps3 update. 5200 kilobytes, pretty small file. All right, now we'll just close out and unplug your USB and I'll meet you back at the camera. All right, so I have my USB here 
and just go ahead and plug it into your PS3. So, port's right here. Plug it on the right side of your PS3's USB slots. Alright, you always want to use the right side if you're modding, or just in general, the right side is better. Um, so now that it's in, go ahead and take your controller. Alright, and then uh, go over to your TV. Alright, I apologize I'm not using my HDP VR for this, but that would have been too much work to put that in the setup. So, um, here's just the camera, you can still see everything. So, scroll to the left, uh, to the settings, and make sure again your USB is plugged into the right hand slot of your PS3. Got a system update. Click update via storage media. And it should say version check. Click OK. This is really, really quick. It says update data of version 3.50 or later can be installed on this system. So just click back and you're all done. So what that means is mine can be downgraded because 3.50 is obviously below 3.55 and our goal is 3.55. If yours says something over 3.55, you cannot downgrade that system. So this is just the, the, the way to check it. Alright, so the next thing you're going to want to do is completely strip apart your PS3 all the way down to the motherboard. So, we're not leaving anything out, we're completely taking it apart. Um, if you don't know how to do this, I just made a video on that. Um, so you can just watch that, it's in the description and on the screen right now. So go watch that, follow along on how to take apart the PS3. Alright, so now the PS3 is completely stripped apart all the way down to the motherboard. So, what you're going to need to do is grab your orange ribbon cable that comes with your E3 flasher. Right here is your NOR chip. This is what we're going to be kind of dumping and uh, using the E3 flasher on. This is what we connect the ribbon cable to. So, um, different motherboards have this positioned differently. Um, you know, all PSDs are different. Uh, this is a CEC H2501A. So, yours is, if yours is that, it might look similar to this. Otherwise, it might be right here, it might be tilted differently, whatever. Mine's like this. Um, you have to look at what way the letters are facing. So mine are this way, uh, meaning I have to put my A3 flash here this way. So just put this on top, press down. If you're using a fresh, uh, new ribbon cable, it should click. Otherwise, it should just kind of be on there. Make sure, kind of push up on it. It shouldn't come off that easily. Um, and now, grab some tape. Just some scotch tape. Grab a fairly little piece. <clears throat> Give me a second. Just grab a piece. Bend the cable back. You don't have to like fold it, but just bend it back a little. And then tape it down. This will just get it out of the way. Just like that. So now move your motherboard out of the way gently. And grab your fan, you're going to want to take your motherboard, and let me just position this better. You're going to take your motherboard, flip it upside down, and position on the fan, line it up. So you should see these heat sinks on the fan, and they have screws on them. So there's a screw right here, 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 and here, and that should line up with those four holes. So I'll do that. So once it's positioned, um, you're going to have to grab a couple pieces of cardboard. I think cardboard works the best because it's somewhat sturdy, I guess. It's better than paper, I think. Um, and I don't know, I just like cardboard, you can use paper if you want. I'll get this off a tissue box. So, just rest them in the middle of the, um, of the screw holes where these pins would go, okay? Rest them in the middle. This is so that we don't get any shortage or anything like that. This is just, uh, this is safe. So now you can just rest these on. We want to eliminate any space between the clips and the motherboard. Now you can just get the screws. They're fat and they're short like this. Let's just do the first one. 
here. Grab your kind of big uh, screwdriver and screw it in. Don't screw in too much on the first time. Just get it in there. Mine's not really lining up completely, so just make sure it lines up. Okay, so that's in there. Now I got the other one down. Don't tighten um, one at a time. You want to slowly get them on. So these are no, nowhere near all, all the way down. Just get them a little bit like that at first. You get the other one. Remember, we want to have even applied pressure across the heat sinks so we don't damage our CPU and GPU or anything like that. Now that it's somewhat fastened, just tighten it the rest of the way. Make sure you don't do this too tight because um, that can damage your motherboard. So get it just snug. Again, don't force it. Let's just move this a little bit. Okay, make sure there's absolutely no contact between the clip and the motherboard. Or else, again, that's dangerous. We could get shortage. There we go. So these are on nice and good. Make sure they're all completely fastened. Okay, good. So now you could just flip it over again. The fan will not come off because we've just tightened it on. Alright, there we go. That's what it should look like. Alright, now it's time to get our uh, clamp. So, I'm going to show you how to get the tape on. Very easy. I don't even know why I'm showing you this, but I just want to be as detailed as possible. Just get a little bit off. Got some scissors. Cut the tape. Okay, so undo this, so you have as much space as possible, and then just put this on. There we go, very basic. And same with the other side. These are pretty bad scissors, but they do the trick. Alright, there we go. Let's get it on. Okay, there we go. So, that's good. Now we don't have any metal-to-metal -metal contact. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this clamp and clamp down the ribbon cable because we want to have a lot of pressure between the ribbon cable and the NOR chip that it's on. The amount of pressure right now is not nearly enough. So we're going to get this clamp right on there. Just get this out of the way. Here, I'm going to loosen up a little bit more. We're going to want to position it as closely to the center as possible. Here, I'm actually going to zoom in so you can see. Okay, so get it on nice and snug. Do not do it way too tight, because again, you can damage your motherboard like that. We just want to have a nice, solid 
connection there. I've seen people just put a simple piece of tape to hold it down. That did not work for me when I did it the first time uh, downgrading a PS3. Uh, I got an error with my 3 flasher, which if you get an error, um, that's okay. But this is a good connection right there. So it's nice and solid. It's not coming off. All right, it's on there nice and tight. Uh, so good. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is grab our micro SD card and its adapter. Mine's in a case. And we're going to put the micro SD card into the adapter. Just like that, and I'll meet you at my computer. So plug this into your computer. Again, if your computer doesn't have a slot for disk, there are USB versions of adapters. Uh, but yeah, I'll meet at my computer. Alright, so once your micro SD card and adapter are inside your computer, go inside the Everything to E3 folder, and you'll find something called Update. It's a update.bin. It's a bin file. And also, open up your USB, or not your USB, your, your, your SD card. So here it is. Make sure your SD card is completely empty, and then drag the update.bin straight onto the root. There we go, it's only 55 kilobytes, so very, very small. And I could take your micro SD card out of your computer. So I've got the adapter and the micro SD card. Take the micro SD card out and put it off to the side for now. So now inside your E3 flasher uh, box, you should, you should have found two things that look like this and like this. So we're going to be using these. Um, first, you're going to want to grab these two, put them together. You see these prongs? These go inside these holes. They match up. My 3 flasher is kind of weak, and um, it doesn't hold together very well, but just push it on as, as well as you could, really. There we go. Now take your ribbon cable and um, if you can see right here, there's this little clip right here. It clips on right here on the E3 flasher. So just do that. That should go on no problem. Uh, we don't need any like clamp on this or anything. This is fine how it is. Um, and now, go ahead and take your micro SD. And let me just take this. Okay. If you look right here, there's a little door. Open it up here. I'm going to zoom in. Um, open up this door. Take your micro SD card. Put it in the correct way. Whoops. It's going to be a little bit tricky. Just put it in there, close the door, and push it right. So now it should be, or not right, push it left. So now it should be fastened, it shouldn't fall out. And now, on your E3 flasher, there should be um, six of these little button things, not buttons, but levers, I guess, so you push up, or down. Um, so all of them should be down except the third one. So push the third one up. That's the third one. And everything else should be down. Okay, just make sure. Third one up, everything else down. Okay. Um, there we go. And now we're actually going to put the, uh, the battery in. Alright, so before we put our power supply back in, we need to connect the fan. Put it right here. Okay. And now I'll take the battery. The PS3 logo should be facing uh, right side up. Put it right behind the fan like it was before. Does not need to be perfect, just very rough. Uh, that's, that's just make it very roughly on. And then connect um, the clips on both sides. So first connect this one. It's a bit difficult to do with one hand, but... 
there, I think that's in. And then go to the other side. And where did that go? Okay, that's from the uh, the power, the cable. So just so this is what it looks like. This is where the power supply goes in. So let me just put my camera down. Well, matter. I'll just make sure this is fastened nice and good. So now connect the power. like that and then take your HDMI or whatever you're using and plug that in as well okay and uh, now uh, take your where is it this thingy I don't know what to call it panel I guess and you're gonna plug the ribbon cable right into here Okay, once you plug it in, you should see that there is a red light on it. That means that everything is working, the battery is uh, on correctly. Okay, so we don't want to connect our, our hard drive because what we want to look for is an error on our PS3 that tells us that our hard drive is missing, and that will actually be the perfect amount of time that lets us know when we can start the E3 flasher. Um, if, you do, if you do have your uh, hard drive plugged in, you have to wait like about 30 seconds or 40 uh, to be safe with the E3 flasher um, but to know exactly when, if you remove your hard drive you'll get an error and when that error comes up then you're good to go so on our E3 flasher we gotta make sure that wait let me just position this we gotta make sure that all of these uh, all of these six are down except the third one just make sure one more time. Make sure all of them are down besides the third one. Okay. Make sure this is in nice and good. Uh, and now go ahead and click on your on button. Uh, the lights should be on on your E3 flasher. My E3 flasher is really weird and unstable, but there we go. There are the lights. Okay, and the error just came up. It says cannot start the appropriate system storage is not found now that's a good sign that means we can start uh, our e3 flasher so what we do with the e3 flasher is let me get my camera if you can see here um, again all the lights are down besides the third one so the last chance to make sure and these blue ones should be blinking uh, back and forth so now what we're going to do is you see this orange button there's two of them one on the top one on the bottom we want to click the one on the top, which means start. So click start. You should see this is empty. And this should slowly build up blue. If it starts blinking back and forth again, or something like that, or blinking, I mean that's an error. Most time, most of the time the error is because your through flasher is not on well enough, and you need to get yourself, you know, you need to clamp it on better. Um, so there we go, there's an error. Uh, I'm going I'm to go see what's wrong with it. Alright guys, so I figured out what the error was. Uh, it was lights 1, 2, and 6. That's something you guys most likely will not get. Um, what that error means is basically, um, I've used the C3 pressure on a different system, and I can't use it for this, but all you have to do if that happens to you, and this is like your second time or whatever using it, is you put the first two lights down and put the rest of them up, and then you start it, and then you should see all the lights glow blue. 
um, and then you can just turn off your PS3, and then that just kind of re-updates this. So don't think that you can't multiple. You don't think that you can't um, do multiple PS3s. If that happens to you, just um, do as I told you, and you'll be able to do uh, unlimited PS3s. So uh, basically, all you gotta do is hit the start button. Okay, and these lights, uh, the blue lights, will light up blue one by one. So I'm gonna speed that up. Okay, so once it's done, you should see the blue lights blinking, blinking back and forth like it did originally. That means that your first dump is done. So take out the uh, micro SD by sliding this to the right and just taking this out carefully. Um, you don't have to turn off your PS3, uh, but I'll meet you on my computer, so put this inside your adapter, and yeah, I'll be there. Alright, so once you're at your computer, go ahead and go inside your uh, micro SD card. And you'll see you have a new file inside here. It's called BKP PS3, which kind of stands for PS3 Backup. You'll have a C3 Flasher, which doesn't really matter. Um, but we're going to take both these files, and we're going to put it inside our Everything E3 folder. So for you, I have made um, three backup folders. We're going to use all of them, because we're going to make three backups. So I'm going to the first backup folder and drag these two inside there. Oh, my bad. Okay, and now you could just close out of this. So you're inside the backup folder. Uh, and go back to your SD card and delete everything on it. So basically just have it backed up. Now we're gonna go on the PS3 and repeat this process two more times. All right, so that was my second dump. Now I'm inside my micro SD card again. We have another dump here. So just go back into your everything to E3 folder, go into backup two, and then control C, control V. So now the, these are backed up as well. Go back inside your micro SD card and delete everything off of there and back it up one more time. Um, I'm not actually gonna show you the video because my battery is really low on camera so I have to like kind of um, have to be efficient so you guys know how to do it I just show it to show you how to do it twice uh, then I'll be back with my third dump see you then all right so that was my third and final dump so just uh, control C on these again go back into everything that you three go into backup three and paste it there we go now we have three completed dumps dump one dump two Dump three. We need three dumps just to make sure our PS3 is safe and they're all good. So how do we know? We have to put them through uh, Nor Inspector. It's a program that's inside the uh, Everything E3 folder. So just open up Nor Inspector. And all you have to do is just drag on each backup. Somewhere on here, right there. Then go to status, everything should say OK, uh, and that's good. Go back to backup 2, do the same thing. Whoops, just open up Photoshop. Open more inspector. Backup 2, status, everything's okay. More inspector again. Backup, whoops, backup 3. Drag that on. Status, everything's okay. That's good. And I actually did these three dumps um, like pretty. Uh, far apart like so I didn't do them like all at one time because I my battery died a couple times so I did all these three dumps within a span of 
maybe an hour and um, that means my PS3 is totally good. Alright, so once you've inspected all of them, go into PS3 Dump Patcher. And uh, I should say, did you read these terms and conditions? Say yes. And now go just, you know, take whatever dump you want. I'll just take the first one and then drag it on here. So you should see a big OK right here. That's another sign that all your dumps are good. You want to, then it says, do you want to patch this image? Click yes. And that shows you where it's saved. Everything, OK. Back up one. OK. So we close out of this, go into everything to E3, go into backup one. You should see this BKP uh, PS3 underscore patched. Now, open up your SD card. Delete everything off your SD card. Take this BKP PS3 underscore patched and drag it onto your SD card. Now the only thing on your SD card should be BKP PS3 underscore patched. Now delete the underscore patched so it looks like just like before, BKP PS3 dot bin. This is what it should look like. Once that's done, you could just take the SD card out of your computer and we're going to go back to the E3 flasher. Here's my adapter. Take the micro SD card out of it. Whoops, let me just put it inside the E3 flasher again. It's kind of hard to do behind the camera. There we go. Now make sure that all of these um, these green lights, all six, are down. Put this one down. There we go. All of them are down. Now PSC is obviously so on. Click the first orange button, start again, and it should start. This will take longer. I'm just going to tell you that right away. All right. So I got a, fl a flashing uh, blue light. In the second place right here. Um, so that means that the SD card is not seated properly. Um, all you gotta do is just turn off the PS3. Or we're just gonna redo this. Um, the file on it should be fine. It just means that I didn't see it very well, which I understand because holding the, I mean, standing behind the camera and doing this is a little bit difficult. There we go. Maybe that should work. So we'll retry this, just turn on the PS3, and wait until you get the error message. Let me just, uh, it's my computer. Give it a moment. There we go, we got the message. Now once again, Make sure that all these are down, and we can start it again. Hopefully it'll work this time. Alright, so um, it didn't work a few times, but I realized that all I had to do was just unplug this and plug it back in because it wasn't working. So guys, um, this is a good tutorial because you saw a couple different errors, and in case you get those same errors, um, that's great. So if it, if it just starts blinking, um, like the second one, then you could try a few things. Try taking the SD card out and put it back in because it might not be seated correctly. Or try um, repatching a dump or trying to patch a different dump than you did before. Try using a different SD card or just try unplugging this and plugging it back in. And that's what did it for me. So yeah, now it's going. Um, this is, again, slightly slower than the other ones. Um, so yeah, um, I'll be back when it's done. Okay, so once you see this is done, then you are absolutely completely done uh, dumping your PS3 and patching it all with the E3 flasher. You can just take off the E3 flasher now. So I'm going to fix my camera, and um, I'll be back with you. Alright, so now you can just turn off the PS3. 
and once that's off, just disconnect the E3 flasher because we're not going to be needing it anymore. Uh, it's just taking up space now. Um, we're not going to take anything else apart right now because we're going to install the Rogero downgrader to 3.55. So what we just did allows us to do that. On a regular PS3 that hasn't been like flashed like we just did, um, if you try to install the Rogero downgrader, uh, you'll probably just get an error of some sort. But now it actually allows us to use it. So I'll meet you back at the computer. Alright guys, so once you're at your computer, go inside the Everything to E3 folder and also plug in your USB. Not the micro SD, but your actual physical U uh, USB or external hard drive. Um, so go inside here and you'll find the Rogero downgrade folder with the PS3 updat.pup. Right click on it, click copy, uh, close, uh, no, uh, go into USB, go into PS3, go into update. You could delete the minimum version checker we had in here before, and then right click and paste um, the Rogero downgrader. Alright, so once it's on there, you could just close it out, take out your USB, and I'll meet you back on my PS3. Alright, so I have my USB with the uh, Rogero downgrader on it. So just put it in the right hand slot of your uh, PS3's USB ports, there we go, and also go get your hard drive. Here's my hard drive, it's right here, uh, let me make sure I, I know which way to put it in. Okay, so it'll go this way, just slide it in, I actually need to put something underneath it. I'll just use a camera that I'm not using. If that will work. There we go, so the hard drive is in. Um, and now you'll be able to just turn on your PS3. So if we look over there, says connect the controller using a USB cable and then press the PS button. Alright, so I got the cable, plug it into your other USB slot obviously, and then get your controller. Okay. It's flashing. System software cannot run correctly. Okay, this probably won't happen to you. I don't know why this is happening to me, but um, I'm just going to go ahead and click select and start. So this is just going to check the update data on my USB. And now it says preparing to update. Do not turn off the system after the preparation has has completed the system will restart automatically. So now it's installing the Rogero downgrader. Um, again, I I'm pretty sure um, it would have just taken you to your regular PS3 screen. I don't think this was gonna happen, but happened to me. But I think it's all right. I, I think it'll just install normally. So I'll be back when it's done. All right. So it's detected the uh, Rogero downgrader. So I'm just gonna click the PS button. Just gonna check for update data again. Just click right, accept, and click X, and I'll be back when this is done. Okay, so as you can see, there was a Rogero logo there. That means that we downgraded successfully. Um, and now, if you scroll down, you have install package files. Let me just zoom in. There's install package files, there's app home. So guys, if uh, you didn't get the error like I did where it's like you can't run system software correctly and all it did was take you straight to the PS3 screen, all you have to do is just go to uh, go to settings, go to system update, um, go to update via storage media, and it would have found this, click OK, and it'll take you through it. 
and the same thing would have happened, and you'd be in Rogero Downgrader now. So we are on 3.55 now. If I look on system settings, there we go, version 3.55. So you can see. Before you install something like KML 3.55 or the official firmware or something, you need to install something called QA Flag or uh, Toggle QA. It's a package file, so I'll meet you at my computer. Alright, so once you're at your computer, go inside your USB, which you should have plugged in. Okay, and now open up the Everything to E3 folder, and you'll find Toggle QA right here. So drag that onto the root of your USB. Just the root here. So now you see in the root of your USB, toggle underscore QA, it's a PKG file. Alright, now you can just close out of everything, and I'll meet you back in my PS3. Alright, so I got my USB, so plug it on, uh, plug it into the right hand slot of your USB ports. Just like that. Now I'll go over to your PS3. Scroll over to install package files. And it'll detect something called toggleqa.pkg. This is something else I already had in my USB from before, so don't mind that. All you should have is just this. So click on it. Click back. Run it. So your PS3 should have beeped three times, and the screen should turn black. And it should exit out. And there you go. Now you're ready to install something like KML 3.55 or official firmware. That's up to you. So um, if you don't know how to do that, just go to my video, How to Install Custom Firmware. It's, it's literally the same exact thing as what we did with Rogero, where you go to System Update uh, in VS Storage Media. Um, but yeah, so it's up to you right now what you want to go to. Um, you go to any 3.55 firmware, really. Alright guys, so now, again, we're done with the downgrade. Um, so we're going to start taking it apart. I'm not going to show you how to put it all the way back together. Um, that's going to be in the next video. So this is kind of a three video series. I showed you how to take it apart, how to downgrade, and uh, you could also watch how to put it back together. But right now we're going to kind of take the E3 flasher part off and rebuild it a little bit. So first take, well first you want to turn off your PS3. That would be a good idea. Wait till that's done. Okay, so let's see the red light. Um, I'd say you could just take off the power supply first. So here's the power. Disconnect it. Okay, so that's disconnected. That just fell. Um, and now we could unplug and now we can unplug these clips. Now Take out the hard drive. Be careful with it. Um, let's see. We could actually unclamp it now. Let me just put the camera back up. Just undo the clamp. There we go. You can take it off. There's a clamp. And we could actually detach this. Put that to the side. Um, take your USB and USB cable out. Okay. Um, and now, flip over the motherboard. Uh, take your screwdriver. And by the way, I forgot to tell you, um, you don't actually keep the ribbon cable inside your PS3, so you could actually reuse it. Um, yeah, we're going to take these off. Unscrew each bolt, or screw, a little bit at a time. So we want to have even pressure. And we'll be taking out the cardboard. So we're going to put the PS3 back together exactly how it was before. We're not adding anything to it or anything. Um, all we did is we temporarily added some stuff, and we're just going to take it all out. So, 
cardboard can come out. Same thing with the other one, take this out. Okay, and I could gently flip it over. Okay, the fan came off. Um, I'm just going to disconnect the fan. I forgot to do that before. Alright, I'm just going to move the fan to the side here. You can remove your piece of tape that you had before. Okay, and you could lift off the E3 flasher, which is on very tightly now after using the clamp, but it'll come off. There we go, it's off. Now you put it off to the side. Obviously it bent, but that's okay if it bent. Um, there's really no other way. Um, and so I suggest replacing the thermal paste, which I will do. Um, I actually don't have any on hand right now. I'm, I ran out. So I'm going to have to go buy some more. Um, but yeah, so here's the motherboard. Fan is uh, over to the right. Um, and so this is exactly how we started right before the downgrade. And I'll show you how to put it back together um, in the next video. So guys, thank you for watching this tutorial on how to downgrade your PS3. I really hope this was helpful. And I really hope I dumbed it down as much as possible so that anybody could do it. Um, this is just as detailed as possible. Guys, I didn't say this before, but... Um, wanted to mention, uh, if you're someone who's watching this not uh, as a guidance video, but just to, to see what it's like to downgrade a PS3, uh, to see if you, may, if you might want to do it, um, I don't know what your impression might be. Um, it might be like, oh wow, I'm afraid to break it or something. Well, to be completely honest with you, this isn't very dangerous. Um, the only way you could really screw anything up is by physically damaging the motherboard. That's only if you're uncareful and you do something stupid. So, as long as you treat everything uh, carefully, because this is all, you know, semi-fragile electronics, um, it'll be fine. The E3 Flasher software is not going to screw anything up, okay? If anything goes wrong, it'll give you an error, and it's not going to do anything. Um, so, don't be afraid to do this. Just be confident in yourself. Um, and also, you might, some of you might not think it's dangerous, but you might think it's hard. You'll just get stuck along the way. Really, just watch everything that I do and follow exactly how I do it. Um, don't substitute anything that I show you how to do, um, because that could be bad. Like the first time I downgraded a PS3, um, I saw a guy using a clamp, but then um, I was like, I don't have a clamp, I don't think, so I just grabbed a piece of tape, and it didn't work. So I found out from my dad that we have like five clamps in my house. And so um, I just put a clamp down, and it fixed my error problem. Um, so again, guys, thanks for watching. Don't be afraid to do this by any means. This is not very dangerous, guys. If I could do it, you could do it. Seriously. Um, so yeah, see you in my next video.